Good morning, folks. We've got a number of excellent not-to-miss news stories today, some good news on the space weather front, and hopefully connect some dots for you at the end. Starting with our star at spaceweathernews.com, we find the last 24 hours on the sun were calmly foreboding, at least for the surface of the sun. We can see the bright umbral and coronal fields everywhere, and top right, let's take away the ultraviolet view of ionized iron and zoom in on neutral iron emission to see the sunspots. Watch this. Folks, this is how fast sunspots can appear and morph into monsters. This one is developing into a beta gamma delta spot already, and you can feel free to just keep right on going to the far side, please, taking whatever tantrums he's going to throw and doing it back in his room. X-ray flux rising already, and it is indeed from that departing spot as the crossing into C-class flare range can be seen here in 1600 angstroms from ionized carbon. Of course, more relevant is what's happening at Earth, and that is the taking of virtually no geomagnetic effects from these weak CMEs. We see two more tiny signatures of sudden telemetry shifts, indicating possible CME signature, and there could be one more on the way today. The ACE data doesn't make a lot of sense, but it often doesn't. That's why they put up Discover. All in all, the CMEs were extremely weak, and that last one coming possibly today, we can definitively say it would be weaker than expected as well. And so if and when it hits, the geomagnetic effects better be lessened as well. If we actually enter a geomagnetic storm, it would most likely be due to our strength-challenged planetary magnetic field. Veteran observers just start laughing. Another look at the cosmos, another surprise. This time it is in finding a galaxy that looks a whole heck of a lot like ours, but has no evidence of past interactions or mergers, suggesting we didn't get to the exact same look today by a different means. Of course, this trashes the history of the Milky Way as it stands in textbooks, but let's be honest, that's pretty much par for the course in astronomy research these days. Up next, Europa Clipper, a 2024 mission slated to head to Jupiter with a key eye on Europa. The idea is to confirm the processes, or maybe be surprised, at what's driving the tiny jet activity there. Just like Cassini flew through the water jets of Enceladus, Europa Clipper is going to do it at Europa. There are a number of high-sensitivity instruments that should allow for incredible detail of what's beneath where our eyes can see. Interesting bit here on the larger scale warp to the galaxy. Now it's the inner torus setting the galactic current sheet that we most often discuss in catastrophism, but this is the larger one, the spiral arms and the overall rotation setting the larger warp precession of the galaxy. Here, they're saying it's processing more slowly than they believed. And with that number, that speed, already being slower than the stellar orbits around the center of the galaxy, it actually means stars are going to race through the waveform faster than expected. Up next, it is probably the cutest way to describe evidence of the cyclical disaster on Earth. Correlative tiny wiggles, heading back 11 million years. And each little wiggle is a global magnetic event. Not a full cron magnetic reversal, the things that happen every 700,000 years, but the shorter term magnetic excursions like Gothenburg, Lake Mungo, Mono Lake, Le Champ, and the Vostok Greenland event, which happen about every 12,000 years. Last but not least, a fantastic paper out of the top space weather scientists in Japan can not only help us manage the load of potential space weather impacts to technology, but it offers a window into the doors it takes to work the climate and earthquakes as well. When we see the ways that the sun works various technologies, it includes literally almost everything you need to explain the rest except for the induction into the mantle, and that well-known aspect of induction is not included here because it's not exactly a technological concern. But the ionosphere and the ground conductivity, green column, this is the ceiling and the floor of the atmospheric component of the global electric circuit. This is how it can touch every aspect of the atmosphere, and of course the ground as well, to work the atmosphere, the weather, and the climate. And with all the metal, water, and crystals underground, including the known mantle induction, lets us mentally expand this chart into some of the ones from our textbook, which we'll show here. It's the same pathways known to work our technology, it's just that that water vapor in our atmosphere is much more vulnerable than your laptop. We greatly appreciate your support. Our textbook can be found at otf.cells.com along with a lot of other cool stuff. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.